Okay, so I'm going to go over some of the in meeting features first. And um, the first thing that we'll cover is how to mute your microphone. Um, this is helpful, especially in a larger group, um, because it can be distracting if there's a lot of people in a meeting and everyone's microphone is on um, because there's just too much noise going on. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to mute. And you can see my cursor down here in the corner. And this button is a toggle button, which means if you press. Oh, no, see there. I you press it. it again, you're unmuted. And the same thing with the video button. You can start or stop your video. Mm. Um, right now, I'm going to ask everyone if they can go ahead and mute their microphone. Um, it'll be helpful. Mm. Um, just for the, the quality it, of the but I, I don't think you hear me. Oh. Yeah. Um, oh. If I'm you have to... trouble muting your microphone, um, don't worry, because as a host, I have the power to mute people. But I'll give you a chance if you want to do it yourself. Hmm. That button there. Um, I'm on an iPad, and I'm trying to touch the mute to mute it, and nothing's happening. You have to go up to the top. The top bar. Yeah. Just hit the top bar in the black up there, because I'm oh. on an iPad as too. And then, yeah. and then, and then there should be buttons for muting. Hmm. I can't do it today. I can't see that. I've always been able to mute, and I can't. Yeah. If you're on an iPad or a phone, the buttons may be at the top instead of. Yeah, the they're up at the top. I have rec I have recording at the top. But that's it. And did you I'm, hear the? Did you did you hit the black screen at the black part above our pictures? Oh, 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 oh. yes, thank you. There it is. Yep. Okay. And if you're on a computer, a laptop, or a desktop, it'll look similar to my screen right now, and it'll be down here in the corner. So I'm just going to go ahead and mute everyone who isn't already muted. Thank you. Because I can't do it. And then the next feature I'll show you in this meeting um, is the participants tab. So you'll notice down at the bottom, there's a participants button right there. And if you press that, well, it goes away if it's already there. But if it's not there to begin with, if you press it, it'll come up. And then here on the side, you'll see everyone who's in the meeting. And then as the host, you can see that you can um, there's options to rename the person or to mute them or to make them a host as well. Uh, but that's helpful to see who's in the meeting there. And then the other feature is the button right next to it, which is chat. So if I hit that, you'll notice on the right side, a chat window opens and there's a little uh, text that says type message here. That's where you can um, put in something to the chat. So as an example, I'll Put something into the chat now and everyone should be able to see that. You can also um, send messages to someone in the group individually. So uh, kind of a private message, but generally you want to keep that up to everyone so everyone can see in the chat. So um, let's just do a little test of that. Um, the question is, what did you have for breakfast today? And go ahead and open the see if you can open the chat window and type in what you had for breakfast today. What does the icon look like? The chat icon will be at the uh, the bottom with the other buttons. If you can see where my cursor is right now. This is the, the chat button. OK, so Laurel had oatmeal and fruit. That's a healthy breakfast. English muffin, coffee and croissants, smoothie. Great. So that's how the chat works. Uh, it's very helpful. And we'll also use this chat um, 
during today's meeting where you can put in your questions. Eric, so, can I ask a question? What happens when I put something in the chat? I don't know how to make it go. It never oh, leaves. Hit um, enter. Yes, forgot to say that. Where do you, where is the enter that you hit? Um, it's not a button. It's just on the keyboard. The enter button on your keyboard. Oh, you hit your. Okay, all right. Because I've been in meetings and they don't go away. All right, so I'll hit. Enter. But I don't think it went up there. Maybe it did. I'm also just an oatmeal for breakfast. <laughs> See, I so I put it in. I I'm hitting my. See, Charlie. Well, I don't, I don't actually see what you typed in, Charlie, but. Well, but you, I put in oatmeal and I hit enter. Okay. Well, it sounds and like it's not, right? Well, anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll keep going. Um, but that is how you use the chat feature. Uh, Eric, are, are you sure that everybody knows that they're using the chat button on the bottom of their screen and not trying to do the one that's on your screen share? Oh, yeah, that could be confusing. Yeah, being that this is a screen share, um, I'll get out of the screen share in a second and you can try um, the chat feature again because you might be trying to um, use the chat that's actually on the screen share. So that could be the problem. Um, so as far as the in meeting um, options, those are the, the important ones, the muting your microphone, starting and stopping your video, the participants and the chat. Um, there are a few more options if you wanna get technical, but we won't really cover those today. Um, instead, we'll transition into now creating your own free Zoom account and scheduling meetings of your own. Okay, so I stopped the screen share, so we're we're back to our original window. Oh, you know what? I forgot about the view settings. I wanted to do that. So give me one second and I'll show you that. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen once again because I want to show you the view options. So my cursor is up here in the top right corner mm -hmm. and you'll notice the button that says view. So there's two options here, speaker view and gallery view. Uh, speaker view will focus the camera on whoever is speaking or making noise. For some reason it thinks it's Ruth right now. <laughs> um, but generally that will go to um, who is ever speaking or whatever noise the microphone picks up. That's why it's important to have people muted so it, the speaker view doesn't jump from one person to the next if they just cough or something. Uh, the other option is gallery view where you can see everyone all at once. Um, so it really just kind of depends on the type of meeting. If it's more of a lecture and you're just focused on one speaker, the speaker view is good. Uh, for something like this, um, I prefer to have the gallery view so I can see everybody. Uh, there's also an option to pin a video where if you, you can see my cursor over my little box here, there's a blue button with three dots, that's for more options, and then there's a pin which makes whatever video you selected the one that shows up large. Um, and then there's a button to remove the pin, which we'll, we'll do now. Go back to gallery view. So those are the viewing options. And if anyone has any questions, remember, go ahead and just type them into the chat box and I'll, I'll be looking over there um, to see that we get those covered. Okay. Okay, so I stopped the share and we're back here together. And then we'll go ahead and um, I'll share my screen again and we'll go to the Zoom website and I'll show you how to create an account. Okay, can everyone see um, my screen right now, which is on the Zoom website? Yes. Okay. 
So the website is zoom.us. Uh, it's not .com, it's zoom.us. That's the website that you'll want to go to. And then over on the right hand side, well, I, first of all, you'll notice that um, there's still some video. You can probably see me and definitely hear me. But if you click on the box where the video is, you can move the video out of the way to access the, the right side of the screen here, if that's in your way. So um, you get to the zoom.us, this is the home page, and you'll see a big orange button on the right upper right hand corner that says sign up, it's free. So I'm going to do that and I'll set up because I don't think I've set up a personal account yet. So I'm going to use that as an example. So we'll hit that. And it wants us to um, confirm the date of birth. <laughs> hit continue and your email address. So it says your work email address, but I'm, I'm going to do this as a personal account. So I'm going to put in my personal email address. And it says, we've sent an email to my email with the confirmation link. So once you get this message, you'll access your email and hit that confirmation link. So whichever way you bring up your email is OK. I already have mine open right in here. There's the email. I'll click on that. Welcome to Zoom. And click on this button that says activate account. Okay. And now we'll just need a, our name and we'll need a password. So as I'm doing this, I'm realizing that you're all going to see my password. So maybe I shouldn't do that. <laughs> so I'll just do this as an example. Um, but this is the process that you'll go through. You'll hit your password. You select your password, um, <clears throat> put that in there. Um, it asks if you're signing up on behalf of a primary or secondary K-12 institution, that will be no. And then you'll hit continue and it'll take you to our, your account. Uh, since we already have an account set up for the Senior Activity Center, I'm just gonna sign into that one. So it, when you go, when you have your account created, you can go back to the Zoom website, zoom.us, and then instead of hitting the sign up button, just hit the sign in button because you already have an account. And then from here, you'll put in the email address and the password that you chose. Say, Eric, may I ask you a question? Yeah. What is the advantage of having a Zoom account? You'll need to have a Zoom account to host your own meetings. So if you want to create a meeting and invite others to your meeting, you'll need to have an account. Um, you can always join a Zoom meeting without an account. Um, you know, everyone here was able to join today, and I'm assuming a lot of people don't have an account yet. So um, having an account will let you host your own meetings. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so I put my email and my password, and I'll sign in. and it'll take you to this page. And you'll see the page that comes up is meetings. And um, you'll wanna get familiar with this, um, this menu here on the left side. So we're in the meetings tab right now. And you can see it's selected as upcoming meetings. So these are all of the upcoming meetings. They're listed chronologically. Um, and then you'll, you can go to your profile button 
here and you'll see some information about your, your profile. You can also add a picture here. And this picture, you'll notice it's here. It's also up here in the corner. It's what will appear when you turn off your video. So if you say stop video, um, whatever image you have here will show up. So if you want it to be a picture of your face, but it can be a picture of anything. It can be a landscape or whatever you want. Um, and then just some basic information about your account here. Um, but mostly you'll be working in the meetings tab uh, to see the meetings that you have scheduled. Okay, and then to make sure I haven't missed anything. Okay. So you'll notice a button here on the right side that says schedule a meeting. Um, it's also up here on the top, kind of towards the right side. They go to the same place, so either one works. Um, so I'll schedule a meeting. We'll go through the process of scheduling a meeting, uh, creating the invite, and then inviting your guests. So we'll hit schedule a meeting. And it brings us to this page where we can put information about our meeting. So all meetings will have a topic. Um, I would suggest being as specific as you can with the topic, because um, when people get the invite, they'll want to know what it's for. Um, so and just, you know, the default is my meeting, but that's not very helpful. You want to tell people what it is. So um, as an example, um, we'll do a, a book club. So you can put your title in there. It can be, you know, family Christmas meeting or whatever you're, you're meeting for. Uh, the description is optional. Um, this is helpful, especially if you have a registration like I did for this one, because on the registration page, this description will appear and it's helpful for people to get some more information of, about what they're registering for. Um, so it's optional if you want to put in a description. And then um, don't worry about the use a template. Um, once you're just getting started, you probably won't need that unless you're creating a lot of meetings. You can use a template from your previous meetings um, just to kind of speed up the process of creating a meeting. Um, so we'll need to schedule a time and a date. So that's where you put this. They have this helpful calendar button right here. I'm a very visual person, so I like to see the calendar. So you can select a date that way. Um, let's see, our first book club meeting, let's say it's after the new year, January 8th. Select the time. Uh, let's have an, a morning meeting. Let's go. nine o'clock a.m. And then select the duration. Um, be aware that as a free account, there is a 40 minute time limit on your meetings. Um, so if you go over 40 minutes, it'll just end. Um, the exception to that is if you're only, if it's a meeting between only two accounts, there is no time limit. So if you wanted to set up a meeting with um, you know, your family that lives somewhere else in the country, and it's just a meeting between those two accounts, there won't be a time limit. Um, so that can be helpful. Um, but as soon as a third person is involved in the meeting, there is a 40 minute time limit there. Uh, time zone, I think it'll default to whatever time zone that you're in. So it says specific time, but for example, if most of your participants are on the East Coast, you could change the time zone to make it a little easier for them. You'll just have to remember that you set it in that time zone. Um, registration. So for this meeting, I required registration. Um, it's helpful because you can see how many people are attending. Um, if it's a small meeting, you probably don't need registration, but it's up to you. Um, 
with the with the security features in Zoom, you do have to have either a registration or a waiting room, which is right here. Um, the waiting room means that once you start the meeting, you'll have to accept each participant as they arrive. So um, under the participants button that we saw earlier that lists everyone in the meeting, um, if you have a waiting room selected, the participants will show up there, but you have to press the button that says admit. So you have to let each person in one by one. Um, just another security feature. So it's whatever you, you choose to do if you want to have registration or a waiting room. Um, with big meetings, a waiting room is kind of difficult because then you're, you know, at the beginning, you're just hitting admit, admit, admit. So I chose not to have one. So you can just uncheck that. Um, and then a passcode. You can select a passcode. Oh, I'm sorry. You'll have to have either a passcode or a waiting room. So it's whatever you choose or both. But you have to have one of those options selected. So it might actually be easier not to have a passcode and just have a waiting room. That, that'll make it easier on your guests uh, they won't have to put in a password. You'll just have to admit them as they come into the meeting. So just choose one. You can, it automatically generates a password for you, but you can change it to whatever you want. You know, you pick your password. Um, if you don't want a passcode, just unselect that. But like I said, you'll have to have one or the other. Um, and then the video. You'll want to have your the host video, which will be your video on and the participant video on. Um, that's kind of what makes this good is that we can see each other and hear each other. So I don't know exactly why it defaults to off, but you'll just have to select those two options to turn on. And then the audio telephone or computer audio. Um, the telephone is in case people call into the meeting. There is a, a way. Um, that people can just call in with a telephone to hear the meeting. Obviously, they won't be able to see, but we'll just leave that um, in case people do want to call in. And then a few more options here. Um, allow participants to join any time. That means they can join the meeting before um, you as the host actually come. Um, if you don't want anyone to come before you, then just unselect that. These are all options that, that you can choose. Um, you can take a look at the other options, um, but these aren't necessary. So we'll just leave it how it is. And we'll hit save. So now our meeting is scheduled with our account, but we haven't invited anyone. Um, so it takes you to this meeting and you can see what you just put in the topic and the time you have the option to add it to your Google Google calendar. If you use Google products, you can add it to your outlook calendar or your Yahoo calendar and that will insert it into your calendar and it'll also provide uh, the link. So that can be a helpful reminder. Um, with Zoom meetings, there's there's two ways to actually join the meeting. One is through the meeting ID, and then one is through the link. Um, I prefer to, to use the link. It seems to be the, the best way to do it. Um, but you can also join with the meeting ID. And if you had a password, you would, you would have to put that password in there too. Um, but right now, I'm just going to show you how to work with this link. So this is just some more details about our meeting that we just created. Um, but the important thing is that we have this link here. And this is what we'll use to invite people to our meeting. So the best way to do that would probably be email. So you'll notice a button here on the right side that says uh, copy invitation. If you press that, a window will open with an invitation to your meeting. So it'll have um, 
the name of your account is inviting you to a scheduled Zoom meeting. It'll have the topic, the date, the link, the meeting ID. If there was a password, it would be there. Um, and then also phone numbers if people are dialing in by phone. So what you can do is hit copy meeting invitation. It'll take all of this meeting invitation. You'll notice it said copy to clipboard. So it's just like on a computer when you copy and paste and when you copy text and paste it. So this has been copied and now it's available for us to put into an email to invite people. So for example, you just go to your whatever email you use, create your message, um, type in whoever you want to invite. I'll invite myself. Um, type in your, your subject. And then paste the invitation. So if you right click, it'll bring up this menu and you can hit paste. And there we go. Um, there's also a keyboard shortcut, which is control V if you want to do it that way but it pastes this invitation and then you send it off to everyone that you wanna invite. Um, you'll notice that this, this link isn't actually a hyperlink, um, meaning you can't click on it and take, it won't take you there. And I, I think this is some sort of glitch, but you'll notice that it, it is now. And what I did was I put my cursor right after the meeting and I hit enter. And now you can see it's blue and underlined. It has become a hyperlink now. So like I said, I think it might be a glitch. I'm not sure why it is that way, why it doesn't just come up as a hyperlink automatically. Um, if you ever get an invitation like this and it's not a hyperlink, you can copy this text, right click, and then there'll be an option to, it'll say go to that website and you, or you can copy it and paste it and put it in, into your um, URL bar up here. Say Eric? Yeah. May I ask you, what is a hyperlink? Your definition of a hyperlink? So a hyperlink means that um, this text is a website link. So you click on it and it'll take you to that website. In this case, it'll take you to a website which will open the meeting. So that's the meeting invitation. All right, thank you. Yep. So we'll go back to our meeting here, close that. Um, the way that I get around that problem of, with the hyperlinks is you'll notice the link is right here. And that is a hyperlink. If you right click on that, and say copy link address and then go into your meeting or your email. Just delete this. So put your guests here in your email, your subject, and then just paste that link. Now it is a hyperlink. So um, it doesn't come with a little bit of details about the meeting title and the date, but of course you can always put that in yourself um in the the message of the email whatever that is and you know the date and time if you want to put that in there <clears throat> and then this link will be um people's way of starting the meeting to join you so uh, once you have the link that's really your kind of your invitation card so just do, do what you will with that link, and that's how you share it. Um, for instance, in the emails that I share with our programs, I, I make the link into a button, um, but essentially what that link is is a meeting starter. So that's what you can use to share with people. Okay, so we'll go back to our meeting here. Um, and then we'll go back to the meetings page here. 
So when you create your account and create your first meeting, um, you can go to the meetings page here and you'll see the meeting that you just created because you probably won't have all of these other meetings. Um, since this is our account, we have a lot of meetings going on. Um, and all the meetings that you create will be listed chronologically. So I'm just gonna go to that meeting that we just created as an example. Um, that was January 8th. So you can see the dates here in the meetings. So I'll go to the next page until I find our meeting that we just did. January 5th, I'll go one more. January 8th. So there's the meeting that we just created. Um, like I said, once you create your account, you won't have to find it amongst all these other meetings because it'll probably be the only one there. Um, but you'll notice once you put your cursor over the meeting, it highlights in blue and it's and it's underlined and there's some options here to start or edit the meeting or delete the meeting. So um, once you're ready to get that meeting started, just go to zoom.us, log into your account, go to the meetings tab, find that meeting and you can start the meeting. Um, it's also helpful that you can edit the meeting. So if you press the edit button, it'll take you back to the page that um, you first created the meeting from. And you can change anything that you'd like there if you need to reschedule it, um, or change a password or whatever. Um, password, where does that come in then after you've invited people? Uh, they will need to put in just their own password or like we do with the senior center it's connect right just like how we do with the senior center okay so okay. you can um, create your own password and then people will have to uh, put that in thank you yeah it'll also be listed in the invitation that you send okay so we created our meeting we learned how to share our meeting um, one question that I got before is, can you share a meeting via a text message? Um, and the answer is, I think you can. <laughs> Once you have that meeting link, uh, if, for instance, if you did it on your phone, um, you could just copy that link and paste it into a text message. So you could share that link however you'd like. Um, email is kind of the most common way to do that. Okay, and I'm going to check check the chat here. I think we might have a question. Oh, someone fasted for medical tests for breakfast. That's that's exciting. <laughs> okay, how do you put a picture in? Ruth, do you want to explain your question? How do you put a picture in? Um well, I was in, in a couple of places like uh, in a, sh a screen share, for example, mm -hmm. um, or, or even to put it in the profile. Yeah. Okay. I can show you how to um, change your profile picture and that image will, will be the one that comes up when you turn off your video. Um, does Zoom assign the meeting ID? It does automatically assign a meeting ID. Um, and like I said, I like to join with links. I think that's the best way, but you can join with a meeting ID if you'd like. Okay, so with the profile picture, um, the menu on the left side will hit the profile button right here. And then this is the picture that we have selected. Um, we actually took it from a larger picture, but you can, it says change since we already have one, but when you create your account, I think this will say upload or something like that, or put your image here. I'm not sure exactly what it says, but there'll be something right there where you can um, select a picture and you can upload. So this would access the files on your computer. So you'll have to have a picture saved first. 
Um, right now I'm in the downloads file. So it just depends wherever you save your image to. You can select an image, hit open, and it'll it'll upload it. That will be your kind of profile image. Oops, I didn't mean to make that change. Okay. So now I just want to um, open it up for questions. Is there anything that wasn't covered that you'd like to cover? Um, you can either put it in the chat or speak up if you'd like. I'm going to stop my share here. Okay. Say, so Eric, I have a question again on the view options. Would you explain those two view options, please? Sure. Yeah, let me share my screen here. Okay, so the view options will be up in the top right hand corner. You can see my cursor moving around here. Yeah, there's a button that says view. If you press that, there's two options. There's speaker view or gallery view. Uh, right now we're in gallery view, which is kind of a Brady Bunch view, which means everyone gets the same size square. And if you select speaker view, it'll go and um, it'll focus on one person. Right now, I don't know exactly why it's focusing on you since you're not speaking, but it's supposed to focus on the person who's speaking or making noise through the microphone. Um, so this is helpful for like lectures if you only really wanna focus on what one person is saying. Thank you. That's, you said speaker view. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a question. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. So when you're setting up your meeting, you have an option of either having a registration or just clicking a waiting room. Is that correct? If you hit waiting, waiting room and then you send out this invite to two or three people, then they come into your waiting room and you make let them enter when they hit the hyperlink. Yeah. I was a little mistaken at first. The <laughs> options are you either have to have a waiting room or a password. The registration password. you can have if you want or not have. But, but you that's, do a, have that's a, uh, an option. You don't ever have to have a registration. Correct. Okay, yes. so it's that or the or waiting room or the password. Right. Um, and could you just one more time tell me when you when you have your invitation up and you want to make it the hyperlink, you said you do a right click and hit paste. Is that what you said? Yeah, so um, that would change it then to a hyperlink from just a regular whatever, just a what it was on the screen mm -hmm. that makes it the hyperlink. Let me do that just one more time to show everyone. OK. Okay, so I'll go to meetings. And I'll find my meeting that I just created. Oh, went too far. <laughs> you won't have this trouble because you won't have this many meetings. <laughs> um, there it is. So if we click on the meeting, <clears throat> that's the way to, to get to the hyperlink here. So you'll notice that there's an invite link here. And then there's also a copy invitation here. Right. Um, I first showed the copy invitation, which brings this up. And you can hit copy invitation. And then you go into your email and you can paste that. Right. There it is. And you'll notice there isn't a hyperlink here. So this is the, the link right here to join the meeting, but it's not a hyperlink. Right. To make it a hyperlink, what you can do is put your cursor right at the end and click. Wait, no, it's not working. Interesting. Strange. Try that again. Well, 
guess that's the reason I don't do it this way. I'll show you the way that I prefer, but I wanted to show you this way too. Yeah. Copy, right click, paste. Well, I'm not sure exactly what's going on. So I'll show you the way that I like to do it. <clears throat> Okay, so back on our, our meeting page here with the link, um, instead of hitting copy invitation, what I like to do is just right click on the actual link and then go to copy link address. Copy link address, okay. Yep. And then you can go and create your email message, um, you know, invite whoever you want to, make a subject. You can talk a little bit about your meeting and then just paste that link. So right click, paste, paste. and you'll notice now it is a hyperlink. So yeah. okay. um, that makes it easier for, for your attendees to join. That way, once they see your email, they just click that link and it takes them right to the meeting. Takes them right to it. And that works on the free, the personal account that's, that's free also, correct? Yeah. Yep, the free account just means that you're your meetings are limited to 40 minutes, 40 minutes. if there are three or more people. Um, but like I said, if you only have two people, there is no time. Um, and that's actually two accounts. So you could have, you know, a family with one account meeting with another family with another account, and there won't be a time limit on that. But they don't have to have an account, do they, for that to work? It, is it, because like, I don't really have an account, but I open Zoom meetings all the time. Right. Yeah, just you do the hyperlink account to join, yeah. but you do need an account to host. To host, yeah. Yep. Okay, let's see. Um, screen share, let's see. I'm gonna go through the chat and make sure I catch all these questions. Yeah, so the screen share, um, I'll show you how to do that. Um, let me just share my screen. Okay. So can everyone see the bottom menu here and there's a green button that says screen share? Yes. Okay. So as a host, you're able to share your screen. Um, as a participant, you're not unless the host allows you. Um, this is actually one of the settings you can go into if you want to allow all the participants to share their screen. Um, I haven't really had a case where that's necessary. It's usually kind of just one person at a time that needs to share their screen. And um, it defaults to the host as being the only one who's able to do that. Um, and as a host, you'll have this button that says screen share. And once you hit that button, um, another window will pop up with um, what you have on your computer. So if you have like an app open or if you have a website open, just select whatever it is that you want to share. And then you'll see a blue button in the right hand corner that says share and that will share the video. There's also an option to share the sound. So for instance, if you wanted to share um, a video on the internet, you'll go to that web page. It's, it's always good to have it ready before the share, um, but if it's not ready, you can just share your internet browser and then go to that page. But if you wanna share the sound, there's a checkbox that says share sound and you'll wanna click that if you wanna share sound as well. Um, and that's the basics. Um, if you want to upgrade to longer than 40 minutes, um, let's see that. I think the cost is $14.99 a month. So let me go to the website here. Okay. So on the Zoom website, can, is everyone seeing the Zoom website page yes. now? Okay, mm -hmm. great. So at the top bar, there's a button called plans and pricing. And if you click on that, 
um, you can choose different plans. And it'll show you kind of what you're paying for. So this is the free account. Um, host up to 100 participants, the 40 minute maximum group meetings. Um, there's actually kind of a workaround with the 40 minute maximum group meetings if you really wanted to do it. If you were meeting with family and you, you knew you wanted to meet for two hours, what you could do is just make back to back meetings. So you'll have to schedule three separate meetings with three separate invites. So when one meeting ends, um, you'll just click the invite link for the next meeting. So there was a, a way around that if you need to do it that way. But um, this will show you all the, the plans. Um, looks like they want to want you to pay by the year, but I think the next step up would be uh, 1499 per month. <clears throat> and Anne, I, if you want to stay on afterwards, I think I can help you with that. Um, is there any other questions? I have another question. Yeah. When you went to the share screen, how do you get your what you want to share to that screen that's going to pop up? You go into your uh, directory and click something or how? Um, once you press the share screen button, a window will come up and it'll show the different screens that you have already on your computer. Okay. So for example, if you have PowerPoint open because you wanted to show a PowerPoint slide, that the image of that screen will appear and you just click on the screen that you want to share and then hit the share button. Okay, so if you just wanna show a document, then you just go to where your documents are and click on the document yep. and then it'll come into the box and then you do mm -hmm. the share. Share first though, right? You hit share first, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Um, thank you. you. You can also just share your doc or your desktop and then open a document. So mm -hmm. you could share, um, let's see. So right now I'm sharing this, but if I close out that window, can you see my desktop now? Uh -uh. No, okay. Still so, has to zoom up. Never mind. Then, <laughs> then yes, have whatever you want to share, have that already open. Okay. Hey, Eric, I have a question. Yeah. Um, why is there uh, usually a meeting, both a meeting ID and a passcode? Um, so a passcode is optional. Whoever set up the meeting can have a passcode or, or not. Um, I haven't really covered joining with a meeting ID just because I wanted to kind of keep it simple. Um, but you can join a meeting with a meeting ID and a passcode if you have that. Um, I can show that really quickly. Does it usually take just one or the other or both of them? One or the other. I think it'll take both. Um, so at the Zoom website, there's an, a button up here that says join a meeting. If you click on that, it'll that this is where you'll put in the meeting ID to join that meeting. Right. Why so, would there be a pass why would there be a password then too? It asks um, for both. It lasts I, I join one every Monday with some friends back in Florida. And the meeting ID and password stays the same every week when we join this meeting, but I have to hit that and then I have to put the password in and then it opens and then she lets us in, lets me in. But she doesn't have a hyperlink ever. So, so you, have to use, you have to use both the meeting ID and the password. I do on the, on the meeting that I join uh, with my friends down in Florida. So, um, that's that's the way it, that's the only way I got in. So that's what I did. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we can we can take a look at that. Once you go to your meetings, um, you'll notice there's a meeting ID associated with each meeting. And also hers has a meeting ID and a password that shows up and I, when, it's in her email. 
And when, and then you, I wrote that down and then I just, that's the same one every, every time I have to put in. Yeah. So it's just another way of joining a meeting. If you want to send people the meeting ID and the password, instead of a hyperlink, you could do that. So does this meeting ID number come automatically when you sign up these, all these numbers? Yes. I believe it generates the meeting ID for okay. you. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good. Okay. Any other questions? I have recorded this. So um, what I'm going to do is put it on our YouTube page. So if you want to go back to it, you can check it out and then other people can see it as well. Are there any other questions before no. we end the meeting? No, thank you. How so do you much. set up thank a background? You. Background, okay. Yeah. Um, let me show you that. Mm. <clears throat> okay, is everyone seeing um, my cursor now? Yes. Moving around? Okay. So with this video button, the stop or start video button, there's a little carrot arrow for more options. And if you hit that, a menu comes up and you can go to video settings or choose virtual background. Yeah, do that. It brings up the settings page. Oh. Can you see the settings page right now? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Oh. So this gives you options to add a virtual background. Um, I oh. tried this earlier and it didn't work, I think because of the color behind me. But yeah, see, I don't even show up. It oh. works best if you have green behind you. Mm -hmm. um, there's also filters that you can put on. Mm -hmm. I think it also has to do with your operating system. Um, some operating systems work better with backgrounds than others. Yeah, I've noticed that some, some operating systems offer different virtual backgrounds too. Mm -hmm. Hey, Eric. Yeah. Uh, one quick, what is the technology uh, that allows uh, a picture, a person to be pictured on the screen when they talk? How does that happen? Uh, I think the microphone picks up the sound and then sends a signal to, to make that the featured video. Essentially, I don't know the uh, technical aspects of that. But the choice is up in the right corner, correct? You, you have to choose. Correct. You, you can that. choose. Yeah. yeah, speaker view or gallery view. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you everyone thank for you. joining. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah it was Bye. very, very helpful. Good. Thank Enjoy uh, creating your account and <laughs> virtual meetings and invite people. You can connect okay. with your family over the holidays. Thank you. Thanks, is, Eric. Goodbye, is, this, is this a one time class or do you come out next week too? I won't be doing it next week, um, but I will be putting this on our YouTube page. So okay. you can see it there. Um, I'll share it in our email that goes out tomorrow. Huh. Thank you. Okay, Very good. Thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. bye.